AI news from the last couple days that you might have missed. Probably the first one is one you didn't miss. Mira Marathi is leaving. She has been the CTO for OpenAI. She was involved in bringing Sam Altman back after the brouhaha and drama in 2023 when Sam was briefly forced out by the board. Well, now that O1 is out, now that voice mode is out, she says it's time to leave and she's not the only one. Barrett Zoff, the VP of Research, and Bob McGrew, the Chief Research Officer, announced their departures on the same day. And here's what I notice. The people who were heading up AI's core research division during the time it has been primarily a nonprofit are walking out the door. And that is happening at the same time that news is breaking, that the board is considering making OpenAI for profit. Now, Anyone who's been reading the tea leaves since 2023 can see that the direction of open AI toward being a for-profit classic startup has been written on the wall. It's been very obvious. Microsoft would not build a partnership with Sam Altman and open AI if they did not think they could get return on investment. This is a for-profit company that may have had some unusual founding documents. But fundamentally, we're going to see a very classic VC model. It'll be late stage. It will burn a tremendous amount of cash. Which brings me to the last thing. Mira leaving now is a real blow to Sam raising funds. Now he's by all accounts, extraordinary at fundraising so that I wouldn't count him out, but he is trying to raise the largest VC deal in history to continue to finance and sustain open AI. And it hasn't closed yet. There's been rumors about it circulating for weeks. Having Mira out doesn't help. So we'll see how that goes, but that's something I'm keeping an eye on. In more news from Sam, apparently he has been pitching the US government on helping build out a massive footprint of data centers across the US. So these are five megawatt data centers, like half a dozen of them, five to seven of them scattered across the states. I think Sam is probably pitching it as a jobs thing. And just for context, when you add this all up, this is like 25 to 30 million homes worth of power. Like it's a lot of power. And Sam's play is basically, what wouldn't we want to build AI and train our super intelligence model in the US? So maybe I can get some help for that. And we'll, we'll see. When it gets this big, it's not unusual for companies to pitch the White House on something. Everything goes up in the air during an election year. A pitch is just a pitch, but it's worth thinking about because again, it's another chess move in the ongoing play for fundraising. It allows Sam to position OpenAI as having government partnerships as well as VC partnerships, which in turn lowers a little bit of the risk for VCs looking at funding. This is all reading the tea leaves, it's speculation, but it's not unusual to see that kind of play when you're trying to make something really big. You wanna lower the risk for everybody by showing you have other parties involved. Okay, you might be wondering, where all this power is coming from. And that's where the energy side of things comes in. So Microsoft recently inked a deal to reopen Three Mile Island. They decided probably cleverly to rename Three Mile Island because the PR for that is not great into the Crane Clean Energy Center. And Pennsylvania put out a thing where it's like, this is gonna create lots of jobs and this is really great and uh, it's like 3,500 jobs. It will produce sort of uh, stuff for the community and like you can get uh, power for lots of homes. And in addition, Microsoft will buy power, which by the way, there's conflicting stories about that because Pennsylvania says this is gonna help power homes. And the press releases I've seen elsewhere say Microsoft is just buying all the power for AI. So I don't know, we will have to see. It doesn't open until 2028. I think the idea though, is that Microsoft is gonna put an absolutely massive data center there and it's going to make a run at super intelligence. That's, that's the play that I see on the table. I think that's the play that Satya Nadella is making. What's interesting is that this may not be OpenAI's play. At the end of the day, Microsoft is a partner of OpenAI, but that doesn't mean that everything they do in AI is about OpenAI. They may be doing this for, for you know, something else. They may be building their own model that they want to, to play. Maybe maybe it's the Microsoft Copilot that they're trying to build on. I, I wonder how much OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft is going to last as the price gets closer and closer and closer. People's interests start to diverge. If Microsoft can fully own super intelligence, why would they 
why would they not? Why would they partner with OpenAI? And so just from a game theory perspective, there's some interesting questions around to what extent we should view Microsoft's moves here as being supportive of OpenAI versus competitive. It's an interesting question. And that's the news for you today. Oh, one more. Uh, 14 banks signed on to say they want to fund nuclear energy, which when banks make a public declaration, I kind of roll my eyes. We'll see how it goes. But the fact that Three Mile Island found the funding to restart at the same week that 14 banks signed on saying they want to do more nuclear energy is at least eye opening. So we will see. I think that part of the push here is that people are recognizing that the power draw requirements and the steadiness of power that's required for running true AI data centers, it's so great, only nuclear is gonna be able to handle it. And that's part of the pressure. And I think banks are hungry for the share in the AI profitability and are willing to take the risk on nuclear. And honestly, as people who study nuclear will tell you, it's relatively low risk, it's just, had a couple of, of bad moments that have generated a very long shadow from a reputational perspective. Even Three Mile Island did not actually cost anyone their lives. No injuries. And it's the worst disaster for nuclear power in US history. So if there's no injuries and that was the worst disaster, I can see why people are going back. There you go. It's all the news that I could uh, dig up on AI and energy and some of the politics around open AI. Tell me what I missed. Tell me where you think OpenAI is going. This is like Game of Thrones for uh, tech nerds. I'm curious to hear what you think.